chapter number 1. We'll read verse 18, beginning there. When you find the place, those are able to stand to honor the reading of the Word of God here this morning. He said, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. Heavenly Father, I thank you today. I thank you, Lord, for Jesus Christ. I thank you for the Son of God. I thank you, Lord, for Mary. I thank you for Joseph. I thank you, Father, for the Holy Ghost. And Father, I thank you for everyone that's in the Murphy Church of God on this Sunday morning. And I ask, Father God, that you would anoint me, God, from the top of my head to the sole of my feet. God, anoint me to preach the Word of God. And God will give you all glory, all honor, and all praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You can be seated here this morning. Last Sunday, I began speaking on the characters of the nativity. Last Sunday, we spoke on the Holy Ghost and the vital role He played in the birth of Jesus Christ. Today, I want to take a moment and I want to talk to you about someone who gets much less attention. And his name is Joseph. I want us to understand that Joseph was espoused to a woman by the name of Mary. The way it happened in Jewish tradition, the Hebrew way of marriage was, those arrangements were pretty much made by their parents. They had already predicted and they made plans for who was going to marry who. Joseph was to marry Mary. Everything had been arranged to make that. She had accepted or was willing to do so. And Joseph goes back to his father's house. They would go back to the home of their father and there they would build a room on the side of the house that they and their new wife could live in at their father's house. During this time, it was a time of his household. Basically, all of the laws regarding marriage were in place at the time of this espousal. He was to be with no other woman. She was to be with no other man. The two were to be the one flesh. But while he was gone preparing that house, she was to prepare herself for that wedding day. She was to be waiting. She was to be watching for him and looking for his coming. When that house was finished, Joseph was to come back and receive Mary unto himself. Now, Brother Bill, I don't know how long it took him to prepare that place. I don't know how long this time of his spousal was, sister. But there had to be a definite time period that has taken place. For we know that the angel of the Lord had appeared unto Mary during this time and said, you're going to be with child. And she said, how can this be so? Seeing I know not man. The Holy Ghost is going to come upon you and you're going to bring forth a child. And he told her about Elizabeth. And we know that Mary went and spent time with Elizabeth. So a long period of time had taken place during the time of their espousal to Joseph and went home. Joseph had got that place prepared, Brother Stacy. And now it was time for him to come back and to find Mary. Find that beautiful young lady that he had fell in love with. And can you just imagine his eyes when he come to behold her? I mean, 
mean, there was a period of time went by. Every day he was thinking about her. Every day he was preparing for that marriage. He was planning Sister Diana for the rest of their life that they were going to spend together. But when he beheld her, she had swallowed a watermelon seed. Come on. When a woman brings forth a child, that child grows inside of that womb. When Joseph had been gone, that only meant one thing to him. Somebody's been in the woodshed. Mary is pregnant. She was a spouse to me. But Mark has gone through his mind, she has committed adultery on me. The law said that I've got a right to stone her. I can take Mary because she has been unfaithful. I can take her before the judges. They will take her into the streets of the city and they will stall her as a public example for other young ladies not to do the same actions that she had done. But the Word of God had said that Joseph was a just man. The Word of God said that Joseph pondered and fought upon these things. Men, too many of us are quick to cast forth judgment. Let's be a man like Joseph. <coughs> They'll take a minute and think <coughs> before we react. We'll be swift to hear and slow to speak. Just as God had chosen Mary, God had chose Joseph. He knew Joseph was different than probably any other man that would be spouse unto Mary. And here's what gets me. The angel appeared unto Mary and told her what was going to happen. While Joseph was building this home, preparing for Mary to come, for the bill, the angel could have appeared unto him then. And said, Joseph, Mary is going to be pregnant when you go back to receive her unto yourself. Don't be afraid. The Holy Ghost has come upon her. And she's going to bring forth a son and you're going to call him Jesus. And Joseph could have knew all of this beforehand. But God held it back from him. May I tell you this morning, God knows my future. God knows your future. God knows everything that's in front of us. There's times God will reveal things to us that are in our future. There's other things God is going to let us face to test us. Joseph was getting a test. He come and he saw Mary. All of the surprise, the bewilderment. Let's face it, he had to be bewildered. But he loved her so much, he was not willing to make her a public example. May I tell you, that was the love of God in the heart of Joseph. I'm sure people in this sanctuary, you've done things you don't want nobody else to know. God could have revealed them to the whole world, but you've repented of them. You've made things right to God with them, and God said, I've removed it from you. I will not remember it no more. I'm not going to make a public example out of you. Thanks be to God for the grace of God and the mercy of the Lord. Joseph was a just man. He thought upon these things, not willing to make her a public example. He fell asleep thinking about that. Have you ever had something heavy on your heart? My God, I'm talking about something heavy on your heart. And you lay down at night, you lay down knowing I ain't going to be able to go to sleep. The things that I've seen, the things that I've heard, the things 
up and oh, there's no way I can go to sleep tonight. And you lay down and you're tossing and you're turning and you're rolling back and forth in the bed and your body's in some form of sleep. You're some sort of unconscious state but those things are going through your mind and all of a sudden God comes in. My God. And He speaks peace to you, Brother Jerry. He begins to share things with you. And He begins to tell you everything's going to be alright. Joseph was in that kind of place. He was troubled. He was worried. He didn't know what in the world to do. He was in some sort of sleep, but not really a deep sleep. He was pondering all of these things. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. Did the angel appear unto Mary in a dream? Absolutely not. The angel Gabriel was standing right there talking to her. But unto Joseph, he appeared in a dream. He spoke to him in that dream. Well, Pastor, why didn't the angel Gabriel just appear right to Joseph like he did to Mary? Well, we'll have to ask God that question when we get to heaven. But I can tell you that the word dream is found over 61 times in the King James Version of the Bible. I can tell you, you can go all the way back to Abraham and you can find dreams. You can go all the way back to Abimelech. Remember when Abraham told Sarah that you're my sister, you go with Abimelech, and Abimelech took her, not knowing it was Abraham's wife, but God appeared into Abimelech in a dream and said, don't you do anything with that woman, that's Abraham's wife. Remember the story of Joseph? He was a dreamer, wasn't he? God spoke to him. The baker and the butler had dreams. Daniel, he interpreted the dreams of Nebuchadnezzar and of the kings. All through the Word of God, we can find how God speaks to people in dreams. Joel prophesied, and it was spoken on the day of Pentecost, that your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. May I tell you, in 2018, God still appears in men and women's dreams. And He still speaks to you. You've heard some of my dreams. Now, I've had many dreams in my life, but I could probably count on one hand the dreams that I know God showed up to me and they're just as vivid and they're just as real as I'm standing here today. And I know it was a divine encounter with God Almighty in those dreams. Joseph, don't you be afraid to take Mary to be thy wife. That child conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, and he shall save people from their sins. You know what Joseph did that morning? He got up and he had the best night of sleep he had had in a day or two. Yes, sir. That worry was gone. That fear was gone. That embarrassment of bringing Mary home to see mom and dad was over. What are you talking about, Pastor? Hey, I don't read no word of word of God where Joseph's mom and dad had a dream or seen an angel. That first impression they had of Mary when she come in was either that girl's put on a lot of weight or they suffer wrong. Joseph had to explain it. Let me tell you something. Sometimes explaining something's hard to do. Sometimes explaining something's difficult. But when God's already spoke to you, it's easy. Because you've got a word from the Lord. Joseph rose up and he took her to be his wife. And knew her not until that child was born. Listen. He put her on that donkey and he led her to Bethlehem to be taxed. Today we don't travel by donkey. We travel by Chevrolet, Ford, Toyota, or whatever it is. Gracie, when you was in your mother's womb, me and your mama was going to Charlotte once a month for MIP. We was doing our internship. I promise you I learned where every bathroom was between Franklin, North Carolina and Charlotte because we had been at them at some point in that journey. 
to those nine months. I tell you something else I learned. I learned where just about every hospital was because I was afraid if you was to decide to come along on that journey, I wanted to be prepared to get there as soon as possible. That car rode smooth. Two women that's carried a child. Could you imagine? Riding on the back of a donkey all the way to Bethlehem. I'll tell you, I believe it'll make the birthday come a little bit sooner when you've been riding on a donkey. Joseph got her there. There was no room in the inn. Could you just imagine him? I'm looking for a place for my wife that's bearing this child. She's going to be giving birth soon and no place to lay her. Brother Bill, we care for our wives. We care for our children. We want the very best. And when we can provide the very best, sometimes we get aggravated. But Joseph found the best that he could do. And it was a barn. A stable. And she brought forth that child that night. They wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. They watched as the shepherds come and beheld him. I tell you, not only did the shepherds worship him, the camels bowed down to him. I got a friend. He just got back from Israel. He didn't tell me about it, but somebody else did. They said, you got to see this on this video. He was riding the camel. The camel was getting down on his knees to throw him off, and the saddle broke. It threw him plumb onto the street. I see why he didn't tell me that, but somebody leaked it on the internet. I tell you, that day the camels bowed down. The donkeys bowed down. The sheep bowed down. And whatever other creature was in that house bowed down. If there was a mouse in there, he come and bowed down. At the Savior of the world that was born. Joseph beheld all of this. How proud he had to be to hold that baby. Honey, I remember when I heard you the first time in my life. Nine nights in the hospital. Sleeping on a cot while your mother was suffering. But when you was born, and we laid you in that crib, Mama needed to sleep. Mama had had a rough day. Brother Jerry, old dad, wasn't about to go to sleep. My baby might quit breathing. My baby, something might happen to her through the night. I got to keep my eye on her. Brother Bill, I see old Joseph keeping an eye on that baby. Mary, you get you some rest. I got this. It's all going to be all right. What a man Joseph was. Man, if we could attain to be half the man. That Joseph was. Gracie, after a while, you grew. At times, you would wake up in the middle of the night. I shouldn't tell this. Sometimes when that baby cries in the middle of the night, man, I'm letting the secret out. We pretend to be asleep or mama will take care of it. <laughs> when the truth is we're awake. Shame on me. I know none of you have ever done that, Brother Purdy. I bet you never did that. Joseph was looking after that baby. That child was growing. We don't know of what age it was. Somewhere between birth and two. Joseph dreamed a dream. Guess who it was? The angel of the Lord. Herod seeketh to kill that baby. You rise up and you take that child and his mother and you flee into Egypt. I don't believe he waited his sister till the sun come up. Just look at how big he jumped up. He started packing the bags. I believe he was getting her ready to go to Egypt. Because he 
he is warned of God. They fled. Over time, the market created another dream. Number three. Herod's dead. You can return. It's time to come about Egypt. And all of this was fulfilling the words of the prophecy of the Old Testament. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm telling you, man, had Joseph not been obedient to the Spirit of God, the prophecies would not have been fulfilled. More than anything I ever be or I ever become, let me be obedient to the Spirit of God. Children sometimes are not obedient to their parents. Shame on us, shame on you. But we better be obedient to the Spirit of God. Because it's just not our lives that matter. It's the matter of all of creation. Had Joseph been disobedient to the dreams of the Spirit, the angel of God, we would not have had the Christ child. Thanks be to God for his obedience. That man that little is spoken of. That man that is overlooked. He was chosen of God to be a father figure to the Christ child. He was of the lineage of David which drew him to Bethlehem at the taxing of Caesar Augustus. But when the lineage come down, Joseph did not beget Jesus. But Joseph was the husband of Mary, my God, because he was begotten of the Holy Ghost, of a heavenly Father. My God, I'm glad I got a Savior today, Brother Anderson. And I'm glad his name is Jesus. And I'm glad Jesus had a Joseph uh, that was looking after him and taking care of him. May I tell you, in this world we're living in, uh, there's a lot of Josephs out there. You listen to me. They're caring for children that are not theirs biologically, but they're a guardian over them. They've been placed there to God over them. And I thank God for them men that are willing to take a child that biologically does not belong to them, but to care for them and look out after them and nurture them. That's the spirit of a Joseph. May I tell all of us men here today, we better have the spirit of a Joseph. You say, well, Pastor, I'm getting a little bit older. Pastor, I don't have no children, no grandchildren no more. Well, this is every baby that comes in the doors of this church. We better be a Joseph unto them. We better look out after them. We better care for them. We better be their protector. We better be their God. And we better show them the way of salvation. Show them the ways of God and how to worship God. We need the spirit of Joseph this Christmas season in every church across this land. Every man of God needs to be a man like Joseph. And if we'll do that, we'll say God bless and God move. We're not doing it out of recognition. We're not doing it to have our name mentioned, Joseph's name is mentioned very little. But we're doing it to glorify that name, Jesus. That's wrapped in the swaddling clothes that's laid in the manger. Stand with me all over this house. Heavenly Father, I preach the word that you laid on my heart for this Sunday morning. God, let me be a Joseph. Father, let every man in this house have the spirit of Joseph. 
God let us be obedient to the voice of God. Father God, let them dream dreams, reveal things into them, and God let them be obedient and follow the Spirit. If you're here and you're a man under the sound of my voice, and you say, Pastor, I want the spirit of Joseph. I want you to line up across the front right here this Sunday morning. I want the spirit like Joseph. I want to be obedient. I'm not afraid. I'm not embarrassed to be a child of God. I want to be a Joseph. Now I want some of you mothers, some of you women, I want you to come and stand behind these men that have come up here and say, God, give me the spirit of a Joseph. Would you come and stretch your hand toward them? And would you help me pray right now? Heavenly Father, God, you see, says Stacy today. God, I pray in the name of Jesus. God, that you would give him the spirit of Joseph. God, that he'd be obedient, Father God, unto you. God, that he'd be a vessel, God, in which he could speak to and reveal things. And Father God, he'd make haste, God, to do the will of the Father which is in heaven. God, to glorify the name of Jesus. Lord, that we can help bring forth the name of Jesus under this present world, God. Lord, that's lost and undone without you. God, they need to hear the story of Jesus. Lord, put it in, Brother Stacy. Heavenly Father, God. God, I thank you for Brother Mark. I thank you, God, for this man of God. Lord, this preacher of the gospel. Father God, let the spirit of Joseph God, Lord, rest in him. God, and anointed God, like Joseph had to be obedient, God. Lord, will do the will of the Father. God, let it be upon him, God. And God will praise you, will magnify you, will honor you for it today. Bless him, God. Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for Jerry Decker. God, I see the spirit of a Joseph right here. God, I thank you, Lord, for this meek spirit. God, I thank you for the humblest God and the sincerity of a heart, God. And God, I wanted you to raise him up, God. Lord God, let that spirit, Father God, flow and touch every heart and every soul and come in contact with God. Lord, show him things. Reveal things unto him, God, in the dreams, God. Lord, let the spirit of God speak to him, God. And God, let him be obedient unto you. And to you be all glory. Heavenly Father God, Lord, you see Brother Bill, Father God, touch him, God. Lord, God, use him, God. God, help him, Father God. Lord, the Spirit of Joseph, God, rise up in him, God. And Lord, we give you all the glory. God, reveal secret things unto him, God. Lord, let him have heavenly visitations, God. Lord, let the angels of God minister unto his soul. Thank you, God, for my brother. I thank you, 